Hey everybody, welcome to JLB Sports TV. I am Justin Block. This is my first video in a while and I felt a strong need to film one, especially after Liverpool lost their third straight game today. Uh, many have been asking me on Twitter, on, on, the, uh, on the site, on the channel, asking me, Justin, what is going on with the club? And I'm here to try to ex not explain some of it, but comment on it. I'm here filming at college, which shows you the kind of situation Liverpool is in. Um, I brought my little brother in and we're at NYU right now in my dorm. This is my desk and um, we're filming, let's go. So one of the big things that's always coming up on Twitter, on the comments, everywhere, is uh, the criticism of the Big Four. Or um, by Big Four, I mean the, the British players that were brought in over the summer. Charlie Adam, um, Stuart Downing, uh, Andy Carroll coming in um, in the January transfer window, and Jordan Henderson. Now, um, I vehemently defended many of them, or at least everybody except for Charlie Adam, many times in um, all my old videos, so many times with, over the season, so you're not going to hear that again. If you want to hear me defend those signings again, go to my old videos. Um, I will say this, and it's something that I said in the beginning of the year, and something that many of you have brought up um, during Liverpool's hardest times, is that um, when you spend £100 million in uh, essentially two transfer windows in January and in um, summer, I don't care who the players are, you expect to be top four the next year. Um, no matter who you buy, it's 100, 100 million pounds. You should better buy players that will get you the top four. And um, although I do think Liverpool did that, obviously it hasn't worked out. Um, and I stand by that. Liverpool spent on who was available and more importantly, who was willing to come to the club. Those were the players that were available on the market um, in that particular transfer window. And those were the players, like I said, that were willing to come to the club. Um, I, I don't know what you guys think, but Liverpool is not a desired destination at the moment, especially when you have the likes of Manchester City, Chelsea, um, United, all these other clubs, that, um, even Tottenham now, that are you know uh, competing for the same players that Liverpool want. And even if Liverpool necessarily um, are willing to pay a higher price because they do have money now, um, players don't necessarily want to come to Liverpool. They have fallen. And when Liverpool can't offer Champions League football and is now in eighth place, you know, freaking 31 points behind the leaders and I think, was it, um, and 16 points behind top four, um, it's going to be hard to attract players. Now, my biggest concern with the club right now is just the flat-out uninspired play. Um, it doesn't look like these players know that they're suiting up for Liverpool. They seem to have no pride in the team and they're not playing with any pride. And Liverpool teams have passed, especially... Um, you know, going back to Rafa, um, anytime Liverpool, Liverpool fell behind in a game or the game was going tough for them, announcers would always say, man, this, this Liverpool team, this club really knows how to come back. I would never bet them out. Um, this is a team that knows a thing or two about a come, comeback. Um, if you've been noticing it, announcers don't say that anymore when Liverpool goes down or they uh, fall go behind, a goal behind. Basically because this isn't your father's Liverpool Football Club or even the Liverpool Football Club of three years ago. Um, Istanbul and all those memories are a distant past. Liverpool is in a new dangerous territory right now and something that I'm uh, genuinely afraid of. Now before I get into talking about Kenny Dalglish, I just want to talk about how Liverpool um, is playing overall. Now if you look at them aesthetically and you, you take away um, you know, the stats, like the goals, all the losses, Liverpool um, overall over the course of the season, they've been part playing pretty uninspired football as of late. They're playing a much more flowing, beautiful passing game. Uh, one-touch football. Um, it's not sort of the dry, long ball tactics under Hodgson or the Rafa, you know, meticulously placing pieces here and there. It's not geometric. It's more flowing. It's beautiful. Um, and I appreciate that kind of football. I think it's great. It's easy on the eye. It's what I want to watch. Um, I don't want to watch Liverpool lose, though, and style means absolutely nothing when you're in eighth place. Um, clearly, something has to change, and I know many of you think that change has to be with either Kamoli or Kenny Daglish or with the players all together, and I think we just need to step back, take a deep breath, and reevaluate for a second. I'm not going to outwardly, you know, strip defend Daglish here, but I don't think he should be sacked either. Now, everybody's been saying, oh, you know, when Hodgson was at this point in the season, and when Rafa, you know, wasn't doing well, fans were calling for the heads. Uh, nobody wants Daglish fired. What's going on? Now, I would defend Daglish a little more, <laughs> a little bit more vehemently against that sort of talk if I didn't think he was losing the team altogether. Um, it seems like they're imploding from the middle. You have uh, Luis Suarez going on temper tantrums just about every single match over the, just over everything. I know Liverpool aren't getting calls, but um, Suarez, I hate his temperament on the pitch. It's just, I don't, I don't like to see players complaining. I really don't. And he seems to lose his head just about every single match. You have uh, Pepe Reina sort of fake headbutting players. I know that um, that wasn't true, but still, just the sight of that is, or even the thought of that is, uh, it's revolting. 
And then you have Andy Carroll just straight up cursing at Daglish for getting substituted and going off in the touch tunnel. Like, what? what is... It seems like the club is just falling apart at the seams and Daglish has lost the dressing room. It sort of reminds me of when Gerrard, if, if you remember this image from a couple of seasons ago, when Gerrard stared or just sort of gave Rafa the most disgusted look ever when um, he saw that Torres was coming off. I believe it was a game against Wigan, Liverpool were chasing a couple of goals down, and uh, Rafa decides to substitute Torres. Uh, now, that was sort of near the end of Rafa's regime. Um, I don't think uh, we're at the end of Kenny Daglish's regime, and I think it would be very unfair if he was sacked after the season. Although they're not, they're not going to, it looks like they're not going to really improve um, in the table or points-wise, I do think he deserves another year with the team. Especially he, has an, uh, he deserves another year with the players he has. Uh, Liverpool have brought in so many new players, and I think he needs a year to work with them and to build from there. This is a project, not a one-season deal. Although we all expect a top four in the beginning of the season, we have to look at this um, as a five-year, ten-year pro. Not a ten. -year. Although we all expected top four in the beginning of the season, we have to look at this as you know a five-year project, something that Liverpool is gradually going to um, uh, sort of you know climb the table. Because you know they they gradually actually no, the, the bottom fell out pretty quickly for Liverpool. But this is. This is a rebuilding process, to be honest with you, that's going to take more than one or two seasons. In my opinion, firing managers gets you absolutely nowhere. You can ask Abramovich and Chelsea about that. They would know a thing or two about firing managers and um, not improving their standing. Uh, continuity is very, very key with the football club. Now, I'm saying this all completely objectively. I know it's hard um, to sort of take away your emotions from the situation because it is Kenny Daglish, but I would say this about any manager, even if it wasn't Daglish. Now, Liverpool, although they have been very unlucky this season, it does not ex sort of excuse the uninspired performances, um, not at all. Now, looking to the end of the season, I'm looking for Gerrard and Carragher to step up at le as leaders, not only on the pitch, but in the dressing room to sort of keep everybody together, because at the end of the day, um, Daglish isn't the one that's actually playing. Um, so we need Gerrard and Carragher, our vice captains, you know, Liverpool themselves, to step up, get the team together, and start winning some goddamn games, because these losses are inexcusable, and these performances are inexcusable, and Gerard and Carragher know that better than anybody else. So that's all for today of JLB Sports TV. I am Justin Block. Give me your thoughts on the comment section below. Um, hit me up on Twitter. You know, you guys know the whole deal. But um, I hope you enjoy the video, and I will be filming more very, very soon. Do not worry about this, guys. YNWA.